What's up makers, April Dunham here. In this video, I'm going to show a brand new calendar component that I've created for Power Apps. If you've ever struggled with the date picker control and wish you could do things like disable the selection of weekends or change the start of the weekday, then this video is for you. This one control can not only be used for your traditional date picker type uses, but it can also be used as a traditional calendar where you can see events for a given day. I'll walk you through how it's done, but first, here's the intro. To start, I'm gonna walk you through how you would add this component into one of your applications and all the settings and how it's used. Then we'll go into some of the details about how I actually created this. To use this component, you'll download the MS app file from my GitHub, which I have a link to in the video notes. You'll go to the Power App that you want to use it in, click the Components tab, and select these three dots. If you don't see the Components tab, you'll need to enable that feature. To do that, you can click on the File tab, Settings, Advanced Settings, scroll down, find a section for Components, and make sure that feature is toggled to On. Once you do that, you'll see a Components tab here in your tree view. If we select that, we'll see this option for New Component, and next to it, you'll see these three dots. Click those dots and select Import Components. You can either import components from apps already on your site, or you have this ability here to upload file. So for using my component here, you can upload file and point it to the MS app file to import that component in. You'll see the component is added here. So now we can start using this in our app. So let's go back to our screens tab and then we'll select insert custom and you should see that calendar component. So that's going to add that onto the screen. And I wanna point out all of the settings that we have to configure for this. First, as I said, you can use this either as a date picker or a calendar to view events. So if we click on the component, we see on the right-hand side, we have all of these custom properties we can configure. First property we'll see is the color. This is going to control the color that the dates show up as. The next option is for select range. So if we play this right now, we see this is toggled to off. So this is acting as a traditional date picker where we can select a single date. If we enable this select range option to on, that allows us to say select the 10th through the 14th, and it will fill in and have that whole range. So it's gonna give you a start date and an end date. So if you're using this in say a time off request type scenario, you might wanna enable the range feature. Border radius just controls if you want the fill to be square or circular. So I can say put 50 there. And you see when I do that, the shading for the selected day is slightly rounded. Selected date color and selected date fill is the background color and the font color for when you have a date selected. The important ones are below. First thing you'll see is an option for show long weekday. What that means is it's giving you a way to customize your headers for your calendar. So right now we see we have the abbreviated version of the days of the week. If we toggle this to off, that'll go to your traditional just one letter symbol for the day of the week. So we have that option to customize built in. Now the next one is start week on Monday. So this was a common request that I got from a lot of you all is how can we change this to say not start the week on Sunday, but to Monday instead. So we're able to do that with this toggle. So the default is off so that it will start on Sunday. But if we toggle that to on, that will switch the calendar around so it starts on Monday. Then you see we have this option for allow selection of weekends. So right now, if we play this, we can select any day of the week. But if we toggle that to off, you see Sunday and Monday just turn gray. So if I play this now, I'm unable to click those. These buttons, which is what they are in the background, are disabled. Show close icon will show and hide this icon here. So if you are wanting to use this in a pop-up type scenario, I've included an icon to show and hide this control. Then you see we have a toggle for show calendar events. So if you wanted to use this as a traditional calendar so that, for example, I can see dots on Tuesday the 3rd and the 26th and the 27th. That means that there are events on that date. So if I click on the 26th, for example, it's going to show below what events fall on that date so I can use it as a traditional calendar. So that functionality is enabled with this toggle. So if I turn it off, you see those dots go away and the information below goes away. 
so that now I'm just using it as a traditional date picker. If I am wanting to use that as a full-fledged calendar with events, that's where I would need to fill in this calendar items property, which you see is a table. So I have that pre-populated right now with some information. With the calendar, you see it's going to show the current month and year that you are on. We have arrows where we can navigate through. So if we click the forward, it's gonna take me to December and on, and it's gonna update the date there. And then I can go back and at any time I can select the today option to take me back to the current day. And the current day is always highlighted in red here. So let's take a look first at how you might use this as a normal date picker. So let's take a scenario where we have a simple input. So let me put in a label and a text input. So maybe we wanna put a due date, so I'll have a label for that. And then we wanna populate whatever selected date we have from the calendar control into this text box. But we need a way to initiate the opening of this calendar control. To do that, we can leverage an icon. So we can go to insert icons. And if you scroll through this list, you'll see a calendar icon. So we can put that in there and we'll position this within the text box so that it seems like a clickable button like our normal date picker controls kind of do. Now, if we click that icon and go to its on select property, we can put in a function called reset and pass in the name of our component. This will actually toggle the visibility of our component. Now the only thing we have to do is click on the component itself and go to its visible property. And we have a property that we can use. So we can type in calendar component, which is the name of our component. And if we do a dot after that, you see we have a property called show calendar. All right, so now you see that that just went away. We don't see the calendar anymore. Let's just play this app. So we have a label, we have a text box. We click this icon and it's going to show our calendar control. Now to use this as a date picker though, we need a way to get the date we've selected here and pass that into our text box. So to do that, we can go into our text box, go to its default property, and then in here we'll type in the name of our component again and do a dot after that. If you go through all the properties, you see there's one for start date. So if you're just using this for a single date, you can use the start date function of this and that will populate that with the current selected date. Now you'll see that these are actually formatted as date times, but we can easily change that so we'll only get the date. We can do that with a simple function called the text function. So if we wrap that in a text function, pull in the date and do a comma, you see we have all these date time formats. So if we only wanted the date, we can choose this short date option and that will get rid of the time. So let's just play this one more time. So you see, as we click on different dates in here, it's updating what's in our control so that this acts just like a normal date picker. And because we have that toggle on to not allow weekends, we're unable to select Saturday or Sunday. Once I've selected the dates, I can just click the close button that goes away. And now I can continue filling out my form. And you'll see this works the same if I select the toggle for start week on Monday, I can have that turned on in combination with the disallow the selection of weekends. So I still can't select Saturday or Sunday here. And if we wanted to use it as a normal calendar and not a date picker, we could say toggle back on this allow selection of weekends. We'll switch it back to normal Sunday and then just turn on the show calendar events. And the only thing that you have to do from the configuration side of this is click on your components, go to the dropdown and click the calendar items property and replace that with your data. Now the only thing that you need is you need a title field, a date field, and a time field. So obviously we could point this to our data source and pull that information down. If your field names don't match this, you will have to make some tweaks to the component itself so that the data shows up correctly. So that leads us into looking at the component and how that was built. So it's fairly straightforward. We have three galleries that make up the bulk of this. We have a gallery to show the weekdays. We have a gallery that has the actual calendar items, and we have a gallery that shows the details when you click on a date of any events for that given date. We have a button that will enable you to go to the current date in the calendar, and we have two icons for previous and next month that changes the calendar. We have a label to show the current month and year and an icon to close. Another thing that you're not seeing that's behind the scenes is this timer. This timer initializes the calendar when it's first loaded. If we look at this gal call items, this is where you might need to make some changes if you're pulling your items from a different data source and their field names are different. So if we expand this gallery out, you see we just have two labels. So we have event name, 
which in my case, I'm pointing to the title in my data source. And we have event time, which I'm pointing to time. So all you would need to do is come into either one of these and update them with your field names from your data source. You'll also need to check this gallery's items property because this is doing a filter on the component's calendar items, which you'll fill in. And it's saying where the date equals the selected date in the component. So if your date field is not called date, you'll need to change that here. Now let's take a look at how we're disabling those weekends. That's gonna be done here within this gal calendar on this button day value. This is just a button control that we're allowed to select to select a date. Now, if we click on that and go to the properties dropdown, we want to go to the display mode property. With that on our buttons, we can enable or disable a button from being clickable. So that's what we're doing here. First thing we're doing is again, checking that custom property that we have for the component to see if that allow selection of weekends toggle is set to true. If it is, then we just wanna set the display mode to edit, which means it's clickable. If it's not though, we need to do some checking to see if the date is a weekend, and if so, disable it, if not, enable it. To check if a date is a weekend, we can use the weekday function. Weekday allows you to pass it in a date and it will give you a numeric value back from one to seven. The numeric value that's returned corresponds to the day of the week, so Sunday through Saturday. The number that was returned though is also dependent on what your start of the week is. That's why before we do anything else, we need to do a switch on that start week on Monday property we have to see if it's true or false. If it's false, then we know that it starts on Sunday so that we can do our check accordingly. Otherwise, we need to change it a bit. So if it's false and the week starts on Sunday, our formula will look like this. We're gonna do an if statement and we're gonna use that weekday function and we'll pass it in the date that's selected. Then we're going to tell it that the start of week is Sunday. Then we wanna check, so is the weekday that it finds from this date equal to one? If so, in this case, that means this is a Sunday. Then we wanna do an or, which are these two parallel lines that you see. We're gonna use that same weekday function. We're gonna say if the day of the week returned is seven, which means it's Saturday, then this button should be disabled. If it's any other day, however, the display mode should be edit, so it's clickable. Now, if we have the start of the week set for Monday, we're gonna do this same if condition. The only thing that's changing is the date number we're checking off of for the weekday function. If the week starts on Monday, then the weekday function will return a six for Saturday and a seven for Sunday. So if it's either one of those, we want the display mode to be disabled, otherwise edit. So it's really straightforward and that's how we're able with this custom component to restrict the selection of weekends. And that is something we can't currently do with the default date pickers. So you would need to use a method like this to accommodate for that. One more thing I do wanna show as far as formatting these dates because this has came up in some of my other videos in the comments is how can we change how the date is displayed? So coming back to this example here, if I click on November 26th, the date that's being populated in our text box is the month, the date, and the year. Now that's how we handle dates here in the United States, but in other places you might have the date, then the month, then the year, and that's the format that you need. Well, that's something that we can do if we go back onto the text input in its default property where we are pulling in that start date, the selected date from our calendar control, we can modify this text formula. And instead of that short date time, we can hard code an expression of how we want the date to be. So for example, in quotes, I can have DD for date and a forward slash and then month, month for month, forward slash, four Ys for year. So when I do that, you see that instantly changes the date to have the day first, then the month, then the year. And now you can take that value and patch it to your data source. All right, so that's all I really wanted to show you today. Hopefully this is going to be helpful for you all to give you a more customizable calendar date picker component for your Power Apps. If you have any other ideas of feature enhancements or if you start using it and you spot any bugs, let me know. If this component helps you in any way, I really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button and more importantly, sharing this with your colleagues and your friends. And I wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving.